Hello and welcome to another uh, lesson in PIC microcontroller uh, construction and programming. Today we will be looking at, as the bulletin said today, we will be looking at bootloaders. And one in particular is a very popular one that uh, lots of people use, including myself, is going to be the tiny PIC bootloader. What makes this one uh, so unique amongst bootloaders is that it is obviously, like the name says, it's very tiny. It's only approximately about a hundred words in size, so it's very, very small. It takes up very little, and that is good because with bootloaders you want to, you know, use as little space as you possibly can, so that way you retain the large amount of space for your overall program. This is basically the web page for the tiny bootloader. Um, you can basically get to it through Google. Just Google Tiny Bootloader and there'll be just a ton of stuff for it. So you just click on one of the links that comes up and here's where you get it. Um, and they basically do a very good job of telling you um, what it can what it can do, how to use it. Um, here's uh, a bunch of different devices that are supported, the different families. Um, it's, it's very good, very good. This is your little programming interface. Um, this is a little simple program that they created for you to be able to load your uh, load your hex files and flash your code to your chip using the bootloader. This communicates with it. Um, just lot, Now for just a simple overview of bootloaders you can go here and it talks about it. Um, for us I can go on a simple rundown of it. Basically what you got when you're using a bootloader is just like this little diagram goes. You basically have a go to statement that resides in the beginning of your memory that tells it to go to the bootloader. So once it starts, it shoots down here, runs the bootloader. Then, uh, and what the bootloader will do is bootloaders will sit and like watch the uh, RS-232 ports, uh, which is the hardware UART ports. If you remember from the last lesson, or lesson five, I believe, that was on uh, using MAX-232s and serialing from your computer to the uh, to the microcontroller, uh, it uses those hardware ones. So uh, on the 886 uh, 16F 886 chip, it will be the uh, pin six and seven are is the receive and transmit hardware UART ports that are designated on the chip. And so basically, you your bootloader here will take and listen on that and check to see if there's any incoming data. If there's no incoming data, then it has an expiration timer. I'd have to look to see how long it is, but basically it waits for a little while to see if any data comes in. If no data comes in, then it jumps to the go to start. And then go to start, then jumps back up like the arrow shows and goes to the beginning of your main program. And so that's where, and then it begins your program. So very, very simple. Um, the other diagram is basically what your, uh, what your program looks like uh, without a bootloader. You basically have your go to start. It jumps over here. This this uh, user interrupt service routines is like if you're going to use watchdog timers and use like an interrupt routine and things like that to where you can like if you put the put the chip to sleep, let's say, and then you want it to be you know have an interrupt that will wake the chip back up after so long. You know, start a timer. Then that's that's where that those interrupts reside. But for our intents and purposes, it's basically just go to start, jumps down to the user main program, and then that's it. And then you know you've got all this empty space for the program to grow. Uh, but with a bootloader, or at least the tiny bootloader, um, boot, some bootloaders are different. Sometimes the bootloader will reside at the very beginning. Um, a lot of times you'll see it at the end like it is here, but uh, in this case it's at the end and just has a pointer, that's the go-to pointer, that shoots down here to uh, to the bootloader. Like Again, waits for a little bit, no data comes in, goes to start, shoots up, goes main program. Same thing, if it does see data, then it will actually then begin writing at whatever address this is, it'll begin writing the program and fill up all the space uh, with the program. And once it's done, it will then basically reboot, the bootloader will then send the signal to go to start and then it'll jump back to the start vector and then it'll jump back up to, to the main program. So that's kind of how that works. So basically there's data present, it writes it, then jumps to the beginning and basically reboots the reboots the chip. Um, if there isn't any data, then it just jumps straight to the start of your main program. So very simple to understand. Um, basically all you need to do to get started here, and here, here's kind of an interesting uh, little comparison chart they have. They, they tell you how many words um, some of the different bootloaders are that you can find, like some from Microchip, uh, 
some from all these different ones, bootload, and it shows you how many words they are. This one's a thousand, this one's two thousand, you know, and then there's the tiny bootloader, and it's only a hundred words. So, very nice, very nice little bootloader, but basically all you're going to do is you're going to download it. Let's go over here to download tiny bootloader. It'll take you to the download page. You just click on any one of these links, whichever version you, you would like. If you want more bleeding edge, you can choose the betas. If you want more stable releases, then you choose the other ones. The one that I'm going to be using is this one, the 197 uh, version. It works just fine. Uh, so let's uh, let's go take a look when you, when you extract it, what it's going to be like. So basically, when you extract uh, when you extract the zip file, you're basically going to get this pile of stuff. Here's the little program. It's an executable program. If we open it up, there's a little program that you can use. It even has some terminaling options. Even has some options. You can either keep the RTS DTR lines on after it opens or off just by checking that. Um, it gives you a bunch of different. You switch terminal after fly, after write. Um, it gives you a bunch of different options, but mainly you're just going to use this. Choose whichever COM port you have, choose your baud rate, whatever you set, which we'll take a look at how to set the baud rate and whatnot in software um, when we when we write the actual bootloader. Um, but that's basically a little program. Basically you just browse, find your you know, find your code, and then just basically hit write flash. The check pick, what this does is when you click on that, it basically pings the chip for its uh for it's basically its information, it asks the chip pretty much what its ID is, what it, what type of chip it is, and then uh, if the chip's there and replies back to it, then you know that uh, your bootloader is functioning properly. So I suggest that be the first thing that you do once you get everything cabled up and put together on your breadboard or circuit board or whatever you're doing, uh, is to run the check pick one, the minute you get it all put together and make sure that the pick's responding, the bootloader code got flashed on it properly, and everything's working. So. Now, where is all of your our stuff? Well, if you go into pick source, for us we're going to be dealing with uh, 886 as well. Make sure you don't forget to include these three files in your project. Those are include files. You do need those. And this is all programmed in assembly, by the way. This isn't programmed in CCSC like I I have been programming. Um, but you do need these. These are your header files. Those of you who haven't messed with assembly, that's what these are. These are your header files. And so we're using the 16F886. We're going the 16F family. So you find it, and see there it is, the 886. They also have a pre-compiled um, hex file that's pretty much ready to use out of the box. However, there is a little bit of an issue with this that I found. Now, maybe in their later versions of the Tiny Bootloader, they've corrected this problem, but um, I know I've ran into it. Is that sometimes the mem clear? Uh, configuration bit is not set and so basically what will happen is that memclear is basically uh, tied to a high internally on the chip so there's no way to uh, reset the chip by software like have the chip reset itself so um, that's very important to be able to be able to do that